rejoice <laughs> in the Lord sometimes. No, no, it says rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, gladden yourselves in Him. Again I say rejoice. Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness. The Lord is near. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. How is that for a life that we can live? No fear, no stress, no anxiety, but we are delighting ourselves in the Lord all day long. It does not say if, if your conditions are going good, everything is going well with you, you have no debt, you know, then everything is... No, no. It doesn't speak of your external circumstances. It just says rejoice. So what do we have to be glad about? Well, a lot. Jesus Christ died for us. Our sins are forgiven. Our sicknesses are healed. We are washed in the blood. We have been made holy. We have the Holy Spirit of God. That's a lot to be glad about. Sometimes just we, we forget what Jesus did for us. And we look at a circumstance and we think this circumstance is really big and it's going to be a burden to me. And then fear comes. Perfect love casts out all fear. Then the Amplified says, For fear brings with it the thought of punishment. And those who fear have not grown into the full maturity of love. For God is love. Okay, so when we experience the love of God, when we experience the goodness of God, no fear can exist in our lives. Okay, so he says, delight yourself in the Lord. So when we go into the presence of God, I mean, you shut yourself off from anything that can be around you, that can distract you, anything that can make you fearful. And you decide you're going to be, you're going to gladden yourself. You're going to rejoice in the Lord. Okay? Looking to what He has done for you. Okay? And not to your burden, not to whatever is in front of you, not to whatever situation you're going through. You look to Jesus Christ. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance... And in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace, peace which transcends all understanding, shall garrison and mount God over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. How does the peace come? When we deny the anxiety. When we deny, we say, I'm not going to be fearful for this. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Because He surely overcame everything. Okay. So we are fearful that something can come and steal our peace. So me and Reed spoke about it earlier today. God's peace is, you don't have to protect the peace that you experience. The peace protects you. The peace of God will garrison, it's, you know, garrison is like guys with the horses in the armies, you know, and mount God over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So when you experience the peace of God, there's no fear. You experience the love because perfect love casts out all fear. You are conscious of Jesus Christ. You are conscious of who He is, what He's done, His might, His power, His presence, His grace. And you are unconscious of your problem. Okay? So, the only thing that can make our peace to disappear is when we take our minds and put our minds on the problem. Those who fear have not grown into the full maturity of love. God is love. So how do I grow into the full maturity of love? I look to where the love of God was demonstrated. 
I looked to where the love of God was manifested, showed forth towards me. That is the cross of Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in Him might not perish, but have eternal life. Okay, so the love of God was showed forth on the cross of Christ. So Hebrews chapter 12 says, you know, let us look away from all that will distract unto Jesus, you know, and run this race with steady and active persistence and strong encouragement. He says, looking away from all that will distract unto Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So he starts it and he will finish it. All we have to do is we look to him. We look away from all that will distract to Jesus Christ. This one says, if, don't fret about whatever is, happening, uh, whatever is happening. Don't look to what is going wrong. Look to Christ. Rejoice in the Lord. Then he says, and God's peace shall mount garrison and guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And then he says, for the rest, brethren, whatever is true. Now, well, Jesus Christ is true. The cross of Christ is true. Whatever is worthy of reverence, I think it's really worthy of reverence, the cross of Christ, the gospel. And honorable and seemly. Yeah, no, that's honorable. Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, lovable, what, what, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious. If there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on, weigh, take account of these things. Fix your minds on Practice what you have learned from me. Okay, so what is this, what, what we have heard, learned and heard from him? Think of all these things. Look to Christ, rejoice in the Lord. Okay, don't look at your circumstance, don't look at your problem. And model your way of living on it. And the God of peace will be with you. So first is the peace of God that comes to, to mount God over your hearts and protect your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay? The peace comes, protects you. And then, the more we th think on these things, it's not only the peace of God that's with us, it's a God of peace that's with, with us. I think that's kind of nice, you know, if I don't only have the peace, but I have the God of the peace with me. I think that'll, that'll help us. Okay. So, whatever goes on in your mind is pretty important. Okay. Because Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, as he thinks in his heart, so easy. Okay. So, Whatever I'm always thinking about, meditating upon, whatever is in my heart, always, if I'm always holding grudges against people, always thinking, oh man, that guy did me wrong. That guy, man, I'm going to wring his neck when I see him. <laughs> he stole my money. He, that guy scratched my car. Man, I'm going to hit him when I see him. If, if that is always in our hearts, there will never be peace. Okay? When will there be peace? Don't fret. Don't have any anxiety about it. If someone smashes your car, God will give you a new one. If my heart is in Christ, and I know who He is, what His heart towards me, and how powerful God is, nothing will ever make me stress. Nothing will ever, nothing is ever so important, so great, and so, no problem is so terrific that it warrants your heart to be full of fear. Okay? We need to live in the peace of God. The peace of God is your protection. Okay? The peace of God helps you to experience Jesus Christ and to get into the reality of what He paid, what he paid for, for your life. Okay? So, right, uh, on this, well, we are at Colossians. Let's go to Colossians 3, verse, verse 1. I think that will be good. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing His resurrection from the dead, Aim at, seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. So what do we aim at? What do we think upon? We aim at the rich eternal treasures that is above. So that above doesn't mean planet heaven somewhere far away. It means in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus there is a storehouse with all the blessings that God has blessed us with in heavenly places. That is, that is Ephesians 1 and Colossians 1. Okay, so there is a storehouse in Christ. All the blessings, all the promise, promises of God, all the blessings lay stored up for you. 
That place in Christ is where it is. So when we look away from everything and just live a life in fellowship with Christ, yielding to Jesus Christ, not worrying about whatever is going out, my only focus, my only aim is to know Him, to be focused on what He did for me on the cross. The peace is guarding my, my heart and minds. And now I'm surrounded in Christ with the storehouse, with all the stuff that God has given me. Okay? Where you are conscious of, there you will interact. Okay? So, uh, Colossians 3 also says later on, our conversation is in heaven. Our conversation is not supposed to be a consciousness of things that's going on in this earth. My conversation is in heaven. In other words... I speak to Christ and Christ speaks to me. And that's what is feeding my heart. And not forever moaning and groaning and worrying about everything that some politician said and everything that, that this guy said this now. Oh man, now the country is going to go up in flames because the president made a speech. Don't worry about it. God is greater than politicians. God is greater than people who are corrupt. God is greater than anything that anyone can do in this earth. Stop looking at those, those things. Don't, don't fret or have any anxiety about anything. If the blue light brigade comes with their black cars that pushes you off the road, bless them, go on with your life. Don't fret about it. Don't let your heart rate go up. Don't let those things affect you. So I, I read a quote from, on a WhatsApp profile from Shane. It said, what you allow continues. What you allow continues. So just think about that for a while. If you allow the peace of God to, to protect you, that will continue. But if you allow your, your minds and your heart to run around and thinking of everything that can make you fearful, thinking about everything that the devil is trying to do in this earth, that, that will continue. So we want to change a few things here. We want to stop letting those things continue. And we want the kingdom of God to continue and advance and change the whole world. Okay, so how will the kingdom of God reach our, our lives and change the world around us. When we look to Jesus Christ and stop looking at the world. Okay, so we are not supposed to get our guidance from them and all their knowledge. They're supposed to look at us and see, hey man, what they're doing is much better than what we, we ever had. Okay, so we're supposed to sh show them something that they haven't seen before. Okay, so um, the kingdom of God, says Romans chapter 14, is... Not in eating and drinking and all kinds of rituals and things, but the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So kingdom means rulership. It means whenever you say something, it happens. It means when you pray, you get an answer. So kingdom is righteousness. In other words, you believe that by the blood of Jesus, you, your sins are forgiven and you are righteous before God. Peace. So the peace of God means garrison. Mount's God and, you know, garrison around you, or whatever those words are. Join the Holy Spirit. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Then make your wants known to God. We have a prayer box there. Put, if you're on TV, just send us a prayer request. We'll put it in the box. We pray over it all the time. Okay? So, make your wants known to God. Get it off your heart. Put it in there and think of the good things that God has promised you. Think of the things that God has done for you. Think of the things that God says to you, who you are in Christ. What is, you know, what his heart's intent is towards you. Like Jeremiah 29, 11, God knows the thoughts that he has towards you. Love, peace, and a prosperous future, an expected end. Okay, think on those things. Okay, let's get back to Colossians chapter 3. Aim at the th things that are above where Christ is seated. Verse 2. And set your minds and Keep them set on what is above, not on the things that are on the earth. For as far as this world is concerned, you have died. And your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. So I don't care if the world is sad that I'm doing something completely different from them. I don't care if they criticize me. I, have no, I, I, I don't care what they say. As far as this world is concerned, I have died. Okay, so if my friends don't agree with them, bless them. They can go and do whatever they like, but I'm following the Word of God. My new real life is hidden with Christ in God, which means that when people come to seek you out and they see your life, they will see Christ. They will not see you. 
Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. Christ lives in me. Christ is not fretful. Christ is not anxious. Christ is not worried. Christ is joyful. Psalm 2 says, he who sits in heaven laughs. He's happy. God is happy. He's not serious. He's not full of wrath and judgment. He likes you. He doesn't only love you, he likes you. He wants to spend time with you. Okay? Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. So, when we want to see real change in this world, if we want to really change something, looking at the problem will not change it. It will distract me from the answer, which is Jesus Christ. Okay? So if I look to Jesus Christ, my prayer time should be fellowship with Jesus Christ who is the answer. My, my prayer time shouldn't be moaning through a list of everything that's gone wrong. So uh, what we are conscious of has a lot to do with what we hear. And then it causes us to say. So Romans 5.17 says, we spoke about it in the car earlier. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness will reign as kings in life. Isn't it funny? Romans 14 says the kingdom is righteousness, peace and good. So righteousness is imputed to you. It's given to you as a free gift. Those who receive this abundant grace and this free gift of righteousness, just receive it by faith, will reign as kings in life. In other words, your heart starts to believe in the blood of Jesus. Then your word starts to change. Your word is not, oh my goodness, this guy is sick. Oh man. Oh, what are we going to do? I don't know. And then we start telling everyone, yeah man, this guy is so sick. I don't even know. There's no hope for him. And then the other guy says, man, that's nothing. You must see how sick my grandma is. And everyone starts to, do, to praise the problem. Man, you don't have a big problem. You must know my problem. Have you seen Afrikaners at a braai? Man, my problem is much bigger than yours. And then another one, man, you've heard nothing yet. My problem is so great, no, there's no answer for this problem. So we just stand there praising the pro oh, problem. You're such a big problem. You're such an awesome, wonderful problem. No one can defeat you. No one can, can get any victory over you. You are the most awesome problem. That, that becomes the confession of our heart. So if the confession of our heart is the problem, and we keep on praising the problem and speaking about the problem, do you think we will have any confidence in the blood of Jesus and the power of God? So rather, just let's look at the stuff that is above, what Jesus did for us. And when someone comes with the problem, say, let me pray for you. That freaks a lot of people out. <laughs> If you meet someone at a bride and you, they say, man, I've got this big problem, they want to moan because they delight in moaning. You know, and they even sad if they don't have anything to moan about. You say, how is it going? No, I have nothing to moan about. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 37 verse 1. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Okay, First Peter 1, you know, if you read from verse 18 to the end, it says, You are born again, not from corruptible seed, but from incorruptible seed. Okay? Immortal seed, says the King James Version, which is the ever-living, everlasting Word of God. So if you believe the Word of the Gospel, the immortal, everlasting seed of God has come and you were born from that seed. Okay. Then it says, For all flesh is like grass. And grass is green and it withers. So the glory of man, our efforts, everything that we can achieve, like the flower, and it falls off. But you were regenerated, born again. So you are not flesh, you are born of the word. Not from corruptible seed not from mortal seed but from the immortal seed of god okay then it says the last verse but the word of god endures forever and this word 
is the good news that has been preached to you. The word of God is immortal, indestructible, the seed of God. In the, you know, John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God. Everything was made through Him, without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. So when there's a situation, a problem, what do we do? We look to the Word of God. In Him was life, the life was the light of men. The Word is the person Jesus Christ. Revelation 19 says His name is called the Word of God. Okay, so the word is this person, and we have been born again from the seed that comes from his mouth. All right, so we are not the wicked that fades like the grass, the unrighteous that fades like the grass. So there is something right there to rejoice about. Psalm 37, he says, Fret not yourself because of the evildoers, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Okay, trust in the Lord. Do good, so shall you dwell in the land and feed surely on his faithfulness. Truly you shall be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, roll repose each care of your load on him. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. I think that is awesome. Now, the apostles had... You know, kind of a lot of trouble coming their way. They were persecuted. You know, Paul was thrown in the open sea for three days. He was thrown for the lions at Ephesus. They stoned him at Lystra. That guy was beaten 39 stripes so many times. They really persecuted these. They didn't like him. He came there with power, didn't like him. It's the same today. Okay, but you know what? Every time he just stood up, dusted himself off, go on. It was their sport in those arenas to throw Christians to the lions and see how the lions rip them apart. But Paul just stood up. If you are in, in the open ocean for three days, in the cold, in the water, you will not survive. Your body temperature will go down, you will die of hypothermia. But he just got out of it. Okay, even a snake came out of the fire and attached itself to his hand. Okay, he just shook it off, walked on. Power of God, the gospel of Christ. What was he looking at? His problem, oh, there's a snake on my hand. He didn't ask, is this a nice snake? Is this a beautiful snake? Is this a poisonous snake? Oh, snake has stripes. Oh. It's a fat snake. He just shook it off into the fire and went on. So the people who sat there said, oh, this guy must be a criminal because, and he must be cursed of God because, you know, a snake bit him. And then he just shook it off and went on and suffered no ill effects, says the Bible. And they just looked at him and waited for him to drop dead, but nothing happened. And then when nothing happened, they thought he was a god and they started to worship him. Okay? So God is, is visible in people who look at God. God is not visible in people who look at their problems. So if you want to see supernatural things in your life, look away from your problem. Look to Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 17. I'll give you the short version. For our light momentary affliction. Paul, have you gone mad? My light momentary affliction. Oh, wow, look at all the stuff they're doing to you. Great, Paul, light momentary affliction. But he said, you know, we struck down but not destroyed. Cast down but, you know, I just get up. Always bearing in our body the same putting to death that Christ suffered. Speaking of the apostles. Okay, so now. Our light momentary affliction. This slight distress of the passing hour is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory. 
Uh, when Christ shall appear, you will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. Beyond all measure, excessively surpassing all comparisons and all calculations, a vast transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. Now here comes the verse that you need to hear. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are visible are temporal, brief and, brief and fleeting. But the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. All flesh is like grass. Grass fades, the flower drops off. Glory of man is like the flower of the grass. The things unseen are not brief and fleeting. He says, you are born from the everlasting word of God. That word is the gospel, the good news that you heard. Those things are deathless and everlasting. The things that are invisible. Keep your eyes on the truth of Jesus Christ. And stop looking at the things that's troubling you. If you hear the right word, your heart will be at peace and the peace will protect you. No matter what happens, no matter if you, they throw you for the lions, or if they, you know, and it was not metaphorical, there was real lions. <laughs> or if they hit you with a stick on the head for 60 days. Peace. That kind of peace freaks people out. If you look to Christ, you don't allow those things into your heart, but you allow for the power of God to flow in your life. That will that will remain that will continue.